the drive into left center field. That ball is going to be out of here. It's gone. It's 7-15. There's a new home run champion of all time, and it's Henry Aaron. Today, Today. I consider, I consider myself, myself the luckiest, the luckiest man, man on the face, on the of, the face earth. of the earth. Gibson swings and a fly ball to deep right field. This is going to be a home run. Unbelievable. A home run for Gibson. And the Dodgers have won the game five to four. I don't believe what I just saw. Second throw. There's a home Corks one in the right, down the line, it may go! Go crazy, folks! Go crazy! It's a home run, and the Cardinals have won the game! Little roller up along first, behind the bag! It gets through Buckner! Here comes Knight, and the Mets win it! This is WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Here we go, 403, and welcome to WHPC Sports Talk. I am your host, Michael Merlo. Alongside me, I've got Joshua Yamahi, Matt Leonard, Elijah Blaine, and Ross Levine. A very busy day. Every sport's trying to get involved <laughs> these past few days. But guys, before we start, how you doing? We started at 403, and I'm not happy about it. Yeah, it's it's been late. Every, it's been late every day. I'm not pleased about These it. These people recording gotta watch their numbers. That's all. <laughs> they, they gotta stop, or I'm just ending their show it. early. <laughs> that's it. Somebody about it. Is your mic off again? Probably. Oh no. No. Uh, uh? Huh? No, it's off. I think it's off. Talking to the other one. Testing, testing. Yeah, that use that one. Yeah, use okay. that mic. <laughs> but yeah, just I don't. Bring I don't it over. Why is it always me? No, it's that mic. It's not you. It's that mic. Annoying. You know, I don't I don't like the fact that we start late. You know what I'm gonna do? What? I'm gonna run up to whoever is doing their show or recording their show and doing it late, and I'm gonna smack him in the face. <laughs> I'm gonna smack him right in the face because There's that the reference had to be talked about at some point. Because that seems like you know the most logical thing to do. Good job, Will Smith. What like, an idiot. Who who runs this radio station seriously? Like we gotta go to the man in charge. No, all seriousness. <laughs> like, are you s I know we have to talk about it because it's being <laughs> talked about everywhere. Will Smith just slaps Chris Rock, who by the way is a true professional and I don't think he should make fun of somebody's health because yeah. J- uh, his wife, Will Smith's wife, yeah. she did lose her hair for a reason, but the joke was spot on. Yes. I mean, the joke was <laughs> spot on. It was a great joke. It was pretty good. It was yeah. pretty good. And, Meanwhile, and Will Smith was laughing at it. Will then he looks at his wife and goes, oh, wait, this is serious. Her and then goes and stops Chris Her Rock. name's Jada, right? Yeah, Jada. Jada cheats on him. Yep. She treats him like crap, and yet mm-hmm. he has to defend her on stage like that. I would have laughed. I would have laughed right in her face. <laughs> that is why I'm never getting married. <laughs> that's that's the exact listen, reason. There you go. I, and I don't think she made him do it. No. no I don't think she said, go hit him. No. But yeah, exactly. He felt pressure yeah. to do it. And it was just such an idiotic scene. These other countries, man, must look at this country and say, what has happened? <laughs> this is the biggest stage. You know, I mean, everybody that was watching last stage. night. It was a big stage. It's not, everybody. It's not the Super Bowl, yeah, biggest like, stage in that industry. Yeah, in that yeah, industry. yeah that's fair. And. Every, the world's watching. It's not like the world's not watching. It's it's like the Super Bowl. Everybody's watching, and not as many people, yeah. but everybody's watching. Yeah, they got it. the um, uncensored audio from Japanese and uh, Australian telecasts. So, right. Yeah. But just, it's what funny. A, what a joke. <laughs> what a joke. Will Smith should be ashamed of himself. And of course, now the Academy, you know, they're they're going to review it. I just read a couple hours. Yeah, they may take his ago. Oscar away. It, it, I, I don't think they're going to do that. They won't no take way. his Oscar away. Academy condemns Will Smith's action, loss, um, launches review. I heard they're they're strongly that. considering taking away the award. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, they let him stay there. Sit there they let him do and, like a five-minute speech. And actually accept the award yeah. and try to PR spin it. And his speech was... <laughs> I mean, his speech was so corny. So I liked corny. it. Uh, no. He's sitting there crying. I don't care. I don't feel bad for you. <laughs> I, I, nobody feels bad for you, Will Smith. Come on. Because 
the thing is that, you know, you give him a speech and, you know, he's going to try to spin it his way. He did not apologize to Chris Rock. He made sure to not apologize to Chris Rock. He only apologized to the Academy and he tried to justify his actions. So why even give him the acceptance speech? I, I, like ratings, that's it. Because the Academy Awards are desperate for ratings. ratings. Yeah. yeah. What a joke. What an absolute joke. That's why I don't watch that crap. That's why I just steer away. <laughs> what, the sports is the greatest. You yep. don't get this drama. It, it, it's a boring event. It's a stupid, boring event about movies that nobody cares about. That was literally, and nobody yeah. knows. And now it's being talked about everywhere. Who, who so won the best picture? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Oh wait, wasn't it that movie Coda that I've never ever heard of? I That's mean, what it's it was. it's a good oh, movie. The, but there's a deaf guy, right? That I, was that one? I, I don't know. I really have no I clue. I just know. know the name of the yeah. movie. Nobody yeah. cares. No one. And now they have a stage. They have everybody talking about them, and they they're gonna launch a review, and they're oh, they're gonna act so upset with Will Smith. Meanwhile, it's the greatest thing to happen to it in the last ten yes. years. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's talking years. about it. Last thing I'll say about this is Chris Rock took it like a champ. The slap I'm talking about. Oh, he, took- he stood there and just took that like, yeah. like a fighter. Just like, oh, okay. Like, he took it like a champ, and then the way he reacted after he was, was great. unbelievable. Mm. Oh, you couldn't have done it better. That's but why he's a what? pro's pro. That's a man that's been smacked in the face before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. But... He's a pro, and yeah. that's why he gets paid the big bucks. All right, let's talk about <laughs> things that actually matter. Sports. <laughs> again, that doesn't matter whatsoever. Uh, let's start with uh, a little football. Let's talk about the Jets. Because, uh, again, I want to open with baseball. I really do. But just give it a, give it a week or two, mm-hmm. and everything's going to be baseball until the NFL draft. So we're going to start with the Jets here. Uh, the NFL draft is really coming up on us. A month, I think, from now. Or less than a month from uh, now. Yeah, I think it's a April, month. Yeah, April 23rd yeah, 20, or something like that. 26, 27, something. It's about a month. So it's really coming close on us. And uh, Robert Sala was uh, sp- speaking today, and he was asked about Makai Becton, who missed the whole season last year after getting hurt in week one, and people just thought it was going to be a 12-week injury. He would come back toward the end, and there was absolutely no hope. And now they're saying he may not even be ready for OTAs, which is hmm. crazy. That starts in May or June. The Jets have to sit there and ask themselves, yeah, we need a receiver, and we want a number one receiver, but we may have to take a tackle because we have a ton of question marks at the position right now. Fant is good, and Fant should play left tackle, but there is a massive question mark for us around Makai Becton. Yeah, I mean, it's such an unfortunate injury, too, because he... Um, his foot literally was on the um, another offensive line of the Jets, and he just you know got pulled down. It's one of those um, freak injuries or one of those fluke injuries, I should say. And it just it lasts this long. It's not really Becton's fault. Can't really blame him for the injury. No, um, you can't. It's just but- unfortunate. It's unfor. It's like, look, I don't get mad at players for the injuries like that. I got mad at other players for getting injured in other ways, but motorcycle accidents, falling in a hole, Barkley uh, <laughs> tripping over somebody's foot. I yep. get mad at that. Mm. Um, but Ross and I was actually going to almost compare it to that. It's not Becton's fault. No, but first of all, this guy is huge, and his size is a problem. And if he was to get injured, and Robert Sala even said this today, if he gets injured, it takes a guy of his size longer to come back from any type of injury like that. No matter if you're talking about another Mm -hmm. offensive lineman, he's so big it's going to take longer, and they're in, a, they're in a tough situation where they took this guy 11th overall, and I had my concerns. I, I, I don't think this is playing out any differently than I thought in my head when they took him. Yeah, no, no I mean, look, you got to consider taking an offensive line. I really think they're going to take an edge rusher or maybe a cornerback, probably help more the defense. And, look, they were in on Tyreek Hill. They're still in on other wide receivers. They're that, probably going to take one. That's crazy. I read on Saturday now. This is nuts, yeah. That they are interested. They're, I mean— I don't think it's nuts to say that they're interested in number one wide receivers. That's no secret. They no. were this close to the, the one yard line from trading for Tyree Kill, but they're interested now in AJ Brown, which I I think is so stupid. No, he's Titans. not leaving Tennessee. Well, the, apparently the Titans are considering it. That's the rumor right now, and I think they are idiotic to even yeah. consider that. Debo Samuel. That's he was your entire offense there. last year for the 49ers. Mm. They got to pay him whatever he wants. And DK Metcalf, which is not a surprise. Yeah. I just don't think the Jets should be in on that. 
if it's going to cost a first round pick, if it's going to yeah. cost a second round pick, fine. But and I don't think it will. I mean, if you only got you know a late first round pick for Tyree Kill and a couple of other picks, it's not going to cost. Yeah, you a DK first round Metcalf pick to is going to cost you number uh, ten in the draft. You no, think so? Not. No. They weren't even offering Ty- the Chiefs the number ten overall pick for Tyree Kill. Maybe that's why, why they didn't get him. Why would Tyree? Kill- they? But I don't think the Seahawks would trade him for anything less. The Chiefs and the Jets agreed to a trade. It was the two second round picks and a third yeah. round pick. That trade was agreed to. Wow, it was, it was a better package than what the Dolphins offered too. If we're really going to keep it a book, if you're gonna wow. if you're gonna compare it, I I would probably lean toward the Jets uh, picks as well. But yeah, because it's an early third and two early seconds, so I would definitely take that. They got five from the um, from the Dolphins, yeah, so right? Two six, a yeah, fourth. The, like late round picks. That they, they, and then the they, late we don't know what they'll do. They could mean nothing, most likely. And the late first round picks. What yeah. is uh, DK's uh, contract situation? So we're on his rookie deal, probably. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I would consider that crazy to even think that they would talk about getting that tenth overall pick. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. Join the show, guys. Jeff fans, what do you think? What should they add at the draft? Giant fans, we're going to talk about the Giants in a few minutes. Uh, some crazy words from their owner yesterday, which is just <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, yeah, it is funny to think that the Jets are involved in these top flight wide receivers. And it shows that the franchise is coming a long way, that they realize their issues. The uh, Joe Douglas realizing his issues. We don't have a star player on offense. We need to get one for our quarterback. And it's good that they're trying to address this problem. Yeah, I think it's smart business what they're doing. Once again, if you're a young NFL team, we saw a play out with um, Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. 2013, when you have that young quarterback on a rookie deal, that's when you can kind of afford to, you know, pay other positions you otherwise wouldn't if you're paying your quarterback a high amount. And, like, you know, with the Tyreek Hill contract, the Devontae Adams contract, these receivers, like Justin Jefferson coming up, DK Metcalf, who the Jets are interested in, like, these guys are going to get, their market is set, like, even higher than that. I, so, I'd say Jefferson definitely. I don't know about DK. I mean, he, he's been inconsistent. He's been unhealthy. I, I don't know. I don't think he's there yet to say I'm going to get the. He's going to get paid obviously if he hit the market, mm-hmm. but I don't think he's going to get the same payday as as a Justin Jefferson. I, I think Jefferson's a top three wide receiver, or obviously Agreed. an Adams or a Hill. But DK could absolutely re- almost reset his market and be this. Star wide receiver if he comes to the Jets and plays well. Yeah. First of all, you're in New York, and second of all, you're going to be with a team that's going to be willing to pay you, even if he came on his deal for the next year. Yeah, I mean, the thing with DK Metcalf too, it's it's even less about like what a receiver or any player at his position is actually worth. It's can he say I should be the highest paid? Is there an argument to say I can be the highest paid at this position? Right. I think DK has that. It, but you think he ju- should be the highest paid? I, at this no, that's position? not what I'm saying. I'm saying he can make the argument, say in negotiations, like say like. I don't think he has that. Uh, I think so. DK. Yeah. I mean his like physical ability, and when he's on, he's on. So yeah, he can make that argument. I don't. I don't think he'd win that argument. He and it also, win, but it all, yes, of course you can make the argument, but. You also have to remember, what team are you going at? What, what team are you negotiating with? Because if you're in the Jets situation, and DK Metcalf's only going to come here on a long-term deal, and I'm trying to see which way this would go, would the Jets overpay for a receiver like DK Metcalf to bring him here? I wouldn't. I don't think that's the smart move. But maybe the Jets are going to be desperate enough in a situation where if they had to make a trade for DK and they had to get him... To su- he needed an extension. Yeah, I just, would you overpay? I wouldn't. I would test my. Wa- I would test it in the draft. Yeah, I mean, maybe they don't believe in these receivers in the draft. It's possible. Maybe they don't believe well enough in the it's draft. A deep I mean, class, supposedly. Yeah, they have Drake London. You have Garrett Drake, Wilson. Drake London from USC is going to be a stud. And, yes, and I've seen mock drafts now with the uh, Jets taking him at number four. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't a, agree with that. Wow. Yeah. That's a reach. A that's bit. a huge reach. I don't know if it's a reach. You're, this you're, kid is well, very well, good. What we don't know is true, but I mean, I just I feel like a receiver at four. Unless I never you really know. Yeah, I never like drafting wide receiver that high. Like Jamar yeah, Chase was like, like the, the one guy I could think of that worked out. Julio like that. Jones, Calvin Johnson, those type of guys. You know, though, I'm saying with yeah, those guys. out of like, yeah. college, you know. Yeah, Say we also from, don't hold on, Josh. Yeah, we also don't know about Drake London either way. 
They're all, and he plays at USC. Yeah. We we don't see him ever. Oh, I mm-hmm. never like playing at players at USC. So you just wouldn't draft <laughs> any in general. I, I hate those guys. <laughs> no, their quarterbacks are Juju not great. But the USC. I know, like what are their else? No, yeah, but like receivers, quarterbacks. I'm just not a huge fan of the USC. For offense, you're saying for offense, USC, Ohio State, Florida. I do not like any of those three. What's schools. wrong with Ohio State? Ohio State those, has some of the those, yes. those quarterbacks oh, yeah. suck. Oh, the oh, quarterbacks. quarterbacks, yes. quarterbacks yeah. <laughs> At least. What were you gonna say, Josh? Um, I feel like with the Jets, if say Drake London's on the board, but you still have the tackle Neil, you still have Thibodeau who might be available. You still have the other tackle. Um, I can, I can, I can well, I can well. Yeah, I, I think it's, yeah. that would be a bad pick from that standpoint. Hmm. But I agree with you. I think Drake London can do some real good things. I, I mean, obviously with yeah. the Jets and you know Sam Darnold and the UFC and everything, they might be a little like scarred from that. I'm gonna UFC guess players, but. I'm going to guess they want to take, I don't know. They I probably think, um, want to take a lineman, whether it's offense or defense, and facilitate a trade to get one of these star-wide receivers. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm not in the room. I wouldn't know. I would take secondary. I would take um, Sauce Gardner if I were to That's Jets. not a bad pick. It's not a bad pick. I also it, think It's high, can, but yeah. I think they could add it at number 10 if they don't trade it. I think they could add a really solid cornerback at number ten. Like but Sting, you can, either Sauce maybe. Gardner or Sting will be available at ten. But you I can, think one of them. But you could also make the argument that a wide receiver is going to be there. So I don't know. You're arguing That's true. against yourself. Mm. The Je- this is something the Jets have done. The Jets have put themselves in a good situation from free agency and even just building this roster up that they have options. During this draft, they absolutely have options. They can do what they want. So it's it's going to be best player available type thing. Yeah. Uh, very quickly with the Giants, uh, their owner John Mara was uh, <laughs> talking to reporters yesterday, and I honestly, I, I really can't believe this. <laughs> they doubling down on this that <laughs> Daniel Jones. They feel as though they have their quarterback in Daniel. I Jones. don't believe that for a second. Well, but okay, obviously. No, yeah. I, I I understand the owner is going to say that. I get it. You're not going to try to embarrass your quarterback, but. If you are if you are a fan that watches this team, I think we all kind of know he's not he's not getting a second contract. Joe Shane made it pretty. Look, he didn't give him his fifth year option, so he clearly does not believe in Daniel Jones. It's do pretty we, obvious. Do we understand why he's saying it though? I feel like if you are a Giants fan, you want Daniel Jones to be as uncomfortable as possible. <laughs> no, because maybe I, well, he's not that kind of that, guy. Maybe he just needs a. He little, needs to be that yeah. guy. He wants to be a star quarterback in New York. I mean, yeah, definitely, it's, but. They've named yeah. him the guy like multiple seasons. Now. Oh they yeah, coddled him in every direction. So I don't, I don't really. I think he's get... trying to like manif- manifest it into existence at this point. <laughs> but, because like yeah. every action Shane has taken, he he brought in um, Terod Taylor. Yeah, that's... as a backup who can be a starter, a mm. okay starter on a team. Right. You you brought in Tyrod Taylor, who is a valuable backup quarterback. Yeah. He's not a starter. He's a solid backup. But that almost senses to him, okay. We don't trust you 100%, whether it's staying healthy or even just playing, you know, talent-wise on the field. We don't trust you that much. Yeah. And the other thing is they're not picking up his fifth-year option. So this is his last year here. Yeah. I, under this contract, unless he plays very well. Yep. So I don't think they've. I don't think the new regime has coddled him. I right. do believe that this, you know, and I understand maybe the owner has to say it, but I don't think he does. I understand why you would think, oh, the owner is going to give him the vote of confidence, but he shouldn't, so, and he should stay out of these affairs. This is not how Joe Shane or Brian Dayball want this to go. They want this guy to compete, uh, and you're right. Yeah, maybe but, feel like he's vulnerable. Yeah, but I think I think they would all agree that they put Daniel Jones in a horrible situation, mm. and I think that's where it kind of started because you know this when he first came in and he fired after they moved off from Judge Gelman was gone. They basically said, you know, we put Jones in the worst position possible to succeed. So that's one thing. And two, Joe Shane even admitted when he first got the job, he looked at this offensive line, he saw the film, and he said, this offensive line is a problem. So I think, I don't think it's like a lack of communication. I just, but I, I do agree. I don't think they're fully in love with Daniel Jones, and you can't. I, I know for a fact Daniel Jones will not be on this team past this year. Any person with a brain will look at this roster from the last few years and say it's not good enough. Yeah. Agreed. But you're almost being hypocritical. You're saying, okay, we haven't put this guy in a good situation, so we're going to give him one year on a makeshift roster with a brand new regime trying to cut people and cut salary, well, and we're going to give him this one last shot. I don't think it it's... Almost 
feels hypocritical to do this. But thing. don't. But the, again, this is this is what happens when you keep firing coaches consistently. This is what happens. You you fire a judge. Great move. Well, this is the downside. Now you have another scheme. And this and when you fire Jason Garrett, which is again the right move. This is what you this is this is what you sacrifice when you fire coaches. New schemes again and again and again. Yeah, but I think. Other- you're sounding hypocritical, Ross, because I understand what you're saying. I understand, you know, you're you're almost putting the facts out, and then you're saying, "Well, I don't think he's going to be here." He's and not. then, uh, agreed, I don't think he'll be the quarterback next uh, past this season. And then I, you also, this is what happens when you fire coaches. Yes, they had to fire judge. No, they. And didn't. you're not you're not disagreeing with that, but we all understand Jones has not been put in this good situation. My question is, is it fair to just say, okay, Daniel, we understand you've been given, you know, the worst hand dealt ever. You know, not ever, yeah. but you know what I mean. It's been a bad hand. You haven't oh, yeah. been given a fair shot. Is it now fair to say, we're going to do what we can to put a good offensive line, put some weapons around you, but it, this is kind of your tryout for however many games you start this year? Well, I mean, look, here. this is what I think they're gonna they're going to do. I think you get an offensive line... To see if Jones is the guy, and if he's not the guy, at least you put the next quirk in a really good situation. And I think that's that's what you have. To, I think I think Joe Shane knows he's not the guy, and I think John Merrick kind of knows it too. I I think they're just again maybe this is one of those scenarios where you're just trying to up his trade value, right? I mean maybe this is one of those scenarios where you're just trying to do it. Look, Joe Douglas when he before he moved on from Sam Darnold, that's what he said. He he said Sam Darnold's our quarterback, and then a month later he was traded. You can't believe in these guys. It's 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 they're saying it because what are they going to say? They're not going to go out and say you're terrible. They're not going to do that. I wish he said that. Unfortunately, they're not going to do that. You I wish, know he's not terrible. You wish some of these executives or coaches could be completely. Yeah, honest. I know it's, he's terrible. It's like or, coach speak with the executives is what it is. The same thing. Yeah, you can't mm. believe him. You're 100 percent right. Uh, And then very quickly, this just came across my phone, that GM Joe Sheen said he has not made any calls to trade uh, Saquon Barkley, but the owner had said that yesterday. So it's almost like, let the guys do their job, man. Don't try and get involved. You you know, the main reason as to why Giant fans were so happy when you made these hires was because you're going outside the organization, and hopefully you weren't going to have any say. Shut up and let them... Professionals do their job, John. No, nobody likes you. <laughs> yeah, nobody likes you. Nobody likes you right now. You he haven't done a good job. He so just well. he th- he thinks that running the Giants football uh-huh. operations is his God given, you know, thing that he was was passed on down to him from his father. Well, things so have I changed. don't think he's gonna always meddle. A lot until has he's changed. Not owner anymore. A lot has changed since he's been good. The, yes. he, yeah. So much. Yeah. The game has evolved, and he has. Not evolved with the game. So hopefully (laughs) the people that he hired can knock some freaking sense into him. All right. You are listening to WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I am Michael Merlo. Alongside me, I've got Joshua Imahi, Matt Leonard, Elijah Blaine, and Ross Levine. Let's switch it over to some baseball here as we are 10 days away from opening day. Hallelujah. The Mets open up in Washington, and the Yankees open up at home Uh, against the Boston Red Sox. We'll start with the Mets here very quickly because, Mets fans, if you were watching on SMY yesterday, (laughs) or excuse me, Picks 11, you had yourself a treat. Jacob deGrom, Max Scherzer pitching in the same game on the same day. Unbelievable. Uh, deGrom went the first three innings, struck out five. Gave up one run that shouldn't have been a run. Um, I don't know if you guys are watching. Yeah. Francesco Lindor is going to yep. knock that ball down. He cannot let that ball go to the outfield. And then Scherzer finished the game six innings, 90, uh, 90 pitches exactly, seven strikeouts, two runs. You know, it's just, it, it shows you just you pray to God, you knock on wood, whatever you do, whatever, you know, things you believe in, just these guys stay healthy because if they do, it's going to be a special season in Queens. I am. I said this before the show, and you made fun of me. So, oh, that's a hot take. You're excited for Scherzer, but you know, I'm I'm so excited for Max Scherzer. That fit isn't excited for Max Scherzer. I'm you not. To, I'm not saying no one shouldn't be. You I'm don't just have saying to say like, it. You don't have to say. I'm you're still trying excited. to. I'm still trying to process that he wears a Mets uniform when he plays for this team. I I'm know. still trying to process that. That's I, insane. I am too. It really is unbelievable. Like I'm watching him pitch in this Mets blue and orange, and I'm like, this is real. He's actually on this team. He's going to be pitching hopefully 30 plus starts for the Mets this year. This is insane. It's, and the, it's setting in for me in stages. Like <laughs> I, I saw 
a week ago I saw DeGrom and Scherzer talking in the dugout, and then I saw Scherzer on the mound, and I can't wait to see him in this first a regular game, season game. First regular season game, first regular season game at City Field. Now, I'm ready to go. his first start, going to make some people mad right now. So I'm, I'm going to be there for his first start as a Met in Washington. I'll, I don't mm-hmm. have to worry about this problem. You hope. The first, yes. The <laughs> first start that Friday that is supposed to be Scherzer's first start as a Met at 7 p.m. Friday night is going to be on Apple TV. <laughs> Exclusively on Apple yeah, TV. Nice job, so, MLB. SMY, MASN, the Washington channel will Are not you kidding have the me? game. Nope. It'll be on Apple TV. This is I'm like, buying Apple TV. They got me. Like, <laughs> That's it. I'm going to buy it, too, but this like, pisses me off, dude, though. Like, Can you do a free trial and watch Razor Pants and cancel it? <laughs> is that an option? Why, though? Because <sighs> whatever it is, it'll be... Yeah, how many months are there in the season? Five, six, six months. Six, yeah. So it's not, it's not counting the full season. There's six. Yeah. So it's thirty bucks for the season. Oh, it's five dollars a month. Apple oh. TV. Yeah, it's not bad. So like, I've had. It. I didn't even realize I had it. I didn't even realize I'm <laughs> paying for it. Whatever. I, I've told the story. I almost canceled it, and then the next day they came out with this announcement. So it's on Apple TV. Can I would just give me it. that for free too? No, they can't. <laughs> no. But yeah, did Apple. they say the announcers for the game? I see. Oh, I don't know who's doing. The, mm. I don't know who's doing the game. I want to say it's Bob Costas. Oh, oh no! Yeah. What you got against Bob? I, don't I like Bob. Costas. I like Bob Costas. I, I so like boring. him. I feel like the older he gets, it's he's less with it. Yes, that's my issue. I'm fine with Costas. He's got a nice. He's very sound. good. He's he, very good. He's got a nice sounding voice, so I'm not. I'm not complaining. When guys get that up there in age, though, I start to worry about mm. what they're gonna say. Like, who was it? Jim Cott that was like, oh, you know, and says something racist, and they're like. You're done. Get out. You're done. My yeah. I mean, Bob Bob Costas, I mean, he's good in the studio. I just don't like him with baseball. I mean, oh. but like, you know, Pedro Strope and the whole thing. And speaking so of that, that. Speaking of that. Speaking of that. Yeah, speaking of okay. podcasters. Okay. Uh, Kevin Burkhart. Oh, not that. Okay. What were you going to say? You hear about Nick Castellanos and his first home run oh, as a Philly? <laughs> yeah, one second. Okay. His first hit as a Philly. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> congratulations to Kevin Burkhart. Yeah. Who is uh, going to be the number one man at Fox doing the NFL games? Good He's going to be him. doing the next two, next two out of three of the next Super Bowls are on Fox. Yeah. Wow! He's going to be doing you know a couple of Super Bowls right away. Good this for year, Kevin Burkhart. So Kevin Burkhart, uh, SNY alum. I miss him. SNY alum, WFAN alum, WCBS alum. Now the big time. He's big time. So nice. really happy for him. And I want Joe Davis. He oh does, yeah, he's real good. Joe Davis he's is a Dodgers very good. Guy, right? He's the Dodger guy. I want him to get the World Series. Yeah. That would be something. He works for Fox and yep. does a couple of prime time games for them already. He, usually he does college football too. As he does well. college mm-hmm. football. He's yeah. doing a little NFL this year too. Mm-hmm. He does the th- he usually does like Thursday night football here and there, like or Saturday night football. I yes. say a little bit. He's good. no, he's he's bit. really solid. He's a young mm-hmm. kid. He's a, he's a yeah. rising star of the industry. So the, the, I hope he gets the baseball. The one guy I hate hearing call on like a game that of, of a sport that he's not used to. And Ross, you'll appreciate this. I feel like when you're Sam Rosen call a football game, it is awful. Oh, I don't like it. It's it's bad. I, I like those who don't know. He's the Rangers play by play guy. He's great with the Rangers. He's great, but for football, he's so bad. I, I don't even think he knows what he's talking about with, the, with football. It's like this quarterback. I, I do you know him? Like, <laughs> it's like Daniel Jones scores. It's a yeah. power play goal. Yeah. Like <laughs> these networks do that a lot. I remember they had Marv Albert calling football. Games. Yeah, yeah, what was C- that what is on CBS? What is this? It's yeah, like um, uh, he got yes touchdown. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Nah, laughs> what what like, I was um, nah. what I was alluding to earlier though with Castellano, this is funny. I mean, it's kind of, but not really. Um, so we all know the uh, the the Tom Brenneman thing. Yeah, the, yeah. Where, where he had to announce it's on the air his, his, his resignation. Yeah, he's now he's apologizing and he goes and Castellano thought it'll be a home run or whatever. <laughs> so Castellano's first hit is a Philly as he gets his first hit. Some uh, some announcer was apologizing the for Toronto, getting a DUI. The Toronto um, <laughs> no broadcast. Way. Yeah, he was apologizing for a DUI, and, and I'm like, why is he always did evolve no, in no, these no, situations? No, no, no. Well, what happened was they were talking about. Oh, the they're fact. apologizing for him then. Okay. No, no, no. no. It they was an apology. It was an apology. It wasn't. No, they were just talking about. They were going over. It was the Toronto Blue Jays. They, the Phillies were playing the Blue Jays, and the Blue Jay announcers were talking about the pitching coach who got arrested for a DUI. That was it. Yeah. And they had said, you know, they were just talking about the situation, what the Phillies are doing. I mean, the Blue Jays are doing, and then Castellanos hits a single. <laughs> How do all of your like notable think, career successes not, come during like? I'm not gonna lie to you. I think this is overrated. 
I think it's funny. I think it's overrated. It's the fact that it keeps happening, though. It's yeah. That's why it's, it's funny. Like the this, the second time. Yeah. I, yeah, but it's just it's getting overblown. Like yeah. I don't know. It's not. I think it's, it's funny. not as I think, funny. I think this one was a little bit forced. Like I yeah. Like I stopped laughing. I stopped yeah, yeah, laughing yeah. at these. It's happened like a couple of times. Like they, people try and make jokes about it. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of it. But it. It's a co- it's a weird coincidence. Yeah. That it happening. is I'll weird. Like he he finds his way to get hits in the awkward situation. It's, it's amusing. I don't know. I want to co- do a comparison with uh, one Mets player before we talk about the Yankees because I have a couple things on the Yankees here that I do want to get to. So I was reading on Twitter last night, and this is uh, kind of becoming a thing. I've I've seen this posted on Instagram now too. Um, and I'm not going to get excited for a Francisco. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying this because Francisco Lindor yeah. is playing well in spring training. Because I, like I mentioned before the yeah. show started, he had a great spring training last year. So I'm not saying this because of his hot start. Yeah. I'm saying this just based on what happened last season, now coming into yeah. this year. In 2005, Carlos Beltran was traded to the New York Mets. And right. he had about the same number OPS. Yeah, about f- 740. Lindor's was 730. Very similar. Beltron, big right. trade acquisition, came switch to the hitter. Mets, switch hitter, and he was not good in 2005. But in 2006, oh boy, he had 41 home runs, yeah. he had a 950 OPS, he was unbelievable, and the Mets were led to a division title with him yeah. as the star. Yeah. You said exactly what I was thinking. Like it it reminds me of like other athletes that's come to New York and struggled that first season. Like it's York, tough. we know how big like an animal New York is to handle, right? Oh yeah. We saw the first couple months Lindor struggled. And he was he probably was, the worst starting position player in the league. Yeah, and it was a terrible look because he just got three hundred and forty million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and then as the season went on, he got more comfortable. Right. He got his boy Baez came in. That helped a little <laughs> bit, but yeah. He finished the season really well. I'll never forget that game against the Yankees, hitting three home runs. Like he finished really strong, and I think this start of spring training for him is more about how he finished last season than a, Ex- than it is about yeah. Yeah. Hope. And not performing well to start. Exactly, yeah. it's about yeah. him having 16 home runs, having an 822 OPS from June on. That's what it's about. Yeah. It's about this guy that got better as the season went on. That, like you guys said, got more comfortable in this city. Yeah, that's what it's about. And he's not going to put up the numbers Beltron put up. Mm. He's not the kind of player. Yeah. Yeah. But can he get back to his days, his great days? In Cleveland, there's absolutely no doubt about it he can. And he should. He, his contract kicks in this year. Last year he was not paid any cent of the $340 million other than the signing bonus he got. I don't know how much yeah. that was. So his $34.1 million starts this season. Yeah. He better live up to it. That's all yeah. I'm going to say because he's going to be killed he, for a very long time. Yeah. He's going to be here for a while, so and, you know. And you got to, and he's definitely he's going to have to be part of the the rest of the team in terms of just getting those big hits. I mean, the, yeah. Last year he just he just didn't do it. And and look, what I worry about with Lindor is always going to be velocity. That's just because that, that's what everybody said when he left Cleveland was velocity. And you know, you're saying hitting, hitting, or hitting, or hitting, hitting. The velocity was a problem at times. That's where you know the, a lot of scouts say you can get him out with velocity. Our pitch is going to now. Oh, okay. You're saying get a, get a read on like, that. Like, like a know. hard fastball, get him out. Yeah, I mean, there you've seen hard fastballs in spring. I mean, that's what that's the league the, is now. The league's just the average right, then is 95 on our fastball. All right, then maybe he's adjusting, and that, that's a good thing. Because sometimes I look at – this is why I don't always look at the stats of spring. I look at, like, mm-hmm. let's say a pitcher's throwing, like, a 90-mile-per-hour fastball, let's say, and he hit a home run. That's great. What's going to happen when you throw – so he's 97, 98. That's, You're right. So you got to – it's not always about stats. You have to look at the pitchers. You have to look at competition, not just – you know, I don't, I don't just look at stats. No, you're 100% right. Um, it's gonna, listen. There's a ton of expectation, not only for him, but for this whole team. Yeah. And it's going to be interesting to see. It's a brand. It's basically a brand new locker room. I mean, you've got some great veterans added to this clubhouse, and, and guys like Eduardo Escobar, who Ron Darling, you know, the guys have been talking about him. Keith and Ron and Gary have been talking about Eduardo Escobar, and we know since we since we had added him, the Mets had added him. That this is going to be a guy that us Mets fans are going to fall in love with. He's a fantastic leader. I mean, a fantastic leader. Everybody loves him. And he's a guy, he's just a professional baseball player. He moves guys over. If there's a runner on third, he's going to get that ball in the air no matter what and get that guy home. He's a smart, old school guy that doesn't strike out that much. Puts yeah. the ball in play. And the the stat runs batted in. RBIs are being, you know devalued every season we go on now. And I honestly think, you know, I don't agree with it as much as some yeah. people do. 
he for this team, it is important to have a guy that knows how to drive guys in and is clutch with guys on base, and that's what Eduardo Escobar is. You saw that even in the spring training game where Marte got the double, and you know then yep. one Cano sends him over to third, and yep. Escobar gets him home. That that's what you want to see a lot more of the small ball, if especially if you're struggling to score some runs. That's that's the way you have to do it. The one thing I will say about spring training, um, and I. I know it's spring training, and I know he didn't play oh, last This year. is complete overreaction Monday. We're having uh, fun with no, this. <laughs> well, with everybody else, it's it's. I was going to say in terms of Cano, are you willing to cut him? Because I am. I think he's. I think he's kind of shot. I I would not. Monday. I would not I cut so, him. I would not cut him, but he worries me. I'll I tell think, you that. I think how, he's done. How Nobody many years less does he have on his deal? Only one, two, two or three. Yeah. Ooh. I would I cut him. Two. I think it's two. They can't cut him. It's impossible for them to cut why, him. Why not? You, you, you could, you're why you're you eating way money? too much money to cut him. I know Steve Owen has the money, but you're eating yeah. way too much. <sighs> I don't know. You're, you're cutting and you're I, giving I him just, $20 million right there. Ross, it's so early. Like, I know we're talking about spring training, and again, I'm prefaced to but this. Preference not, this. But Cano is like different than spring training. He just looks like he's shot. He also has Can you option hit, him? He is that in his contract? Hit. He hasn't hit. It, well, he it, hasn't played professional baseball in over a year. No, I understand that, but he, he just a lot of his swings just they look kind of weak. I agree with him. He hasn't looked good. He's not on steroids anymore. Give it a couple. Yeah, that's my point. <laughs> give it a few weeks. Give it even into the season. If it's really a problem in the season, you can't option him. By the way, you can't. Um, if if you give it a couple weeks in the season, give it a month in the season. Yeah. And if it still looks like this, then yeah, you got problems. All right, uh, let's talk about the Yankees. This is complete overreaction. I'm gonna. Piss Yankee fans off, and I don't care. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, Garrett Cole yesterday did not look good. Cole Tucker's taking him deep, and I mean deep. <laughs> that's his name. Cole Tucker. Yeah, that, that's Vanessa, Vanessa Hudgens' Hudgens boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. referring to him on Twitter as Vanessa, Vanessa Hudgens. Hudgens' boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Vanessa Hudgens' boyfriend. Very lucky he man. Took, he took Very that, lucky man. Yes, he, is. he took that ball <laughs> to like I ninety five Parkway. That was yeah. It was like it probably hit a car. So I'm not yeah, it was sure. near Raymond James so, Stadium. I guess yeah. It's, it's <laughs> unbelievable. Cole did not look good though. Yesterday, he got roughed up for four runs in a couple innings. I mean, I saw that he didn't throw a lot of breaking balls though. He didn't. No. Oh, again, he was throwing mainly fastballs. Complete. Overreaction. Yeah, I'm just having fun with this. He I mean, look good. Look, but I, hold on, you finish, and then there's yeah. something I'm not going to overreact about. This is a. I, I think you're going to talk about it. Luis Severino does yeah. not look good. I mean, the thing no. is, they're mainly concerned about his um, stuff and how his stuff uh, is looking yeah, like. No, I mean, but his I stuff, his stuff is really? fine. But his location <laughs> is not great at all. Mm-hmm. Listen, Luis Severino. And many Yankee fans, we, I've had mm-hmm. this conversation with them, and when I talk about their starting rotation, they say, Luis is our number two. No, he's you, not. You can't feel no. comfortable. And no. if he is, you got real problems. And if Cole looks like that? That can't. And I'm not worried about Garrett. Garrett no. Cole is going to be fine. He's going to be top three in AL Cy Young voting. I'm yeah. not worried about yeah. Garrett Cole. The guy I'm worried about is Severino, because not only do you have to worry about him possibly coming back yeah. and, and just as a starter... You're going to have an innings limit on this guy eventually because he hasn't pitched over. I mean, he hasn't pitched over 150 innings yeah. in like mm. three or four years. Yeah. Most likely. I mean, I got to look at the last time he did that. that. But it's been a really long time since you've really stretched this guy out. Yeah. Especially if, look, if Cole just doesn't pitch well like he did in the second half of but, last season, it, it's definitely an issue. But and the thing is, I'm not, that worried, I'm not worried about Cole. Are you, are you, but here's the, this is the thing though. And again, I'm not worried either. But the one thing fans are always going to say, maybe not you per se, not not here, but the spider tech. And yes, that, and but that yeah. whole thing. she was not even bad after the um, uh, took yeah, away the spider yeah. tech. No, but the thing is, good. his hamstring was bothering him. Uh, but I, I know it's a bad though. excuse, I know, but he when did he did like n- almost no hit the um, Astros like directly that's, after he that's they one took game. away the uh, spider attack. He's not gonna be, and I remember this explained when it first happened. Jeff Passon explained this. You're not gonna regret the contract that you gave him because either way, at the end of it, it's gonna be a bad contract. It doesn't matter. So you're not gonna regret it. Yeah. But is he the best pitcher in baseball? No, I mean he he's up there. The he's up there. Baseball, <laughs> maybe he's three or four or five compared to he, maybe two or three. He's really good. It. He's really, really good. He's really good, and that's what you want. He's a really good pitcher. I'm just, and look, I I'm always gonna have faith in terms of his competitiveness. I always respect that. 
I like that he doesn't want to get taken out of a game. He's your uh, horse. He's your number one. You he's gotta, really good. You yeah. got to trust him. He's really he's really good. And I think this overreaction of him not being the guy is baloney. He Look, is a hundred percent a number one ace type guy. Yeah, I, yeah. I like Tanaka a lot. He, um, Cole is our best number one since CC Sabathia. So I think yes. we just have to put our faith in him. Uh, hopefully his hamstring is fine. Hopefully the spider attack doesn't really affect him that much. But, but we can't roll out Severino at two. No. No it, way. It can't be. And they've been talking to the A's. I mean, I don't know how f- much longer the A's are going to be talking. The season's about to start and how mm. you know when a trade and, is going to happen. But yeah. it looks like this is going to be the rotation. And, and, I, and I don't like the Yankees' rotation. And if you look at every projection system, fan graphs, all this stuff, they have the Yankees' rotation high up there. And I just don't well, see it. I don't see it. it you know what it is? It, look, a lot of teams, I'm sure there's other teams out there that are going to be in on guys like Sean Manaya. Those guys, mm-hmm. like the White Sox are in on them. I mean, mm-hmm. there's a few There's a few teams out there that are in. But is he even going to get traded? Yeah, maybe you don't. They, maybe they, they hold get, on to him for the deadline. Maybe they trade him at the deadline. That's the move. It's... Well, it's might, risky because he may may lower his value. He, he might get hurt, mm-hmm. something yeah. like that. And no, I mean, look, I think the part of the reason why they're why people are confident with the rotation because they think they've seen them. Um, you know, people hate on; they think they're done, and then they go out and they're really good. I mean, that's that's why they people believe in them. It's not it's not because like of track record. Sometimes it's just because. When you're wearing, when you're unfortunately, when you're wearing the pinstripes, no, that's what people are always I, I think in. I have a lot of um, faith in Matt Blake. He's much better than Rothschild uh, ever was as a uh, pitching coach. Some of the guys that we tried it out there last season, I expected nothing from them, but they contributed a lot. Um, Nestor Cortez is our number five. That's not a bad number five. Where have, is um, that guy Luis Heal? Yeah, that's now. what I'm thinking about because is he going to be a part of the starting rotation or I, is he I would in the minors? I, I don't know. I think he'll be in the minors. I think because at I, some they, point he will. Start, yeah, I he think will. he'll. No will. question. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would. Um, can you pull up like his uh, baseball reference page because I want to. Yeah. Was he I in like it. Double A? He was he, in tr- double A, yeah. triple A a little bit. I mean, he his problem. I think he I think, was double A majors back to triple A. I think that's yeah. his problem was command. That was his issue. But he's looking really good in spring training. He's got to be mm-hmm. a guy yeah. that that potentially makes the rotation. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of names. Herman's out. Herman is Herman's out. Herman's out. I mean, what are the names right now? Cole uh, Severino. Cole Severino. 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 Right, that's all. I'm not talking once. <laughs> yeah. can just do it once. Davey Garcia. No, Luis no? Severino. So, Garrett Cole. Yeah. Jordan Montgomery, yes. Jamison Tyone, and Nestor, Nestor Cortez. Nestor Cortez. That's five. So Luis Hill's not in the rotation then. Okay. Unless you go in six. Mm. Or unless they you don't have Cortez six. then. I, don't, I, I agree with you. Now, just very quickly before we move on from the, the pitching from the Yankees. Uh, the last time Luis Severino pitched more than 150 innings was really more than... Hold on. Let me just make this even more exaggerated. <laughs> Over he Monday. pitched 190 innings in 2018. Yes. That's okay. the last time he had any big time. And that's the last load. time I'd say he's, he was a reliable um, starter on mm-hmm. the mound. Since then, he's had 2019 in which he pitched 12 innings, didn't pitch in 2020, and had six innings last year. Yes. That's not including the postseason. Oof. I think he had a couple. Oh, no. He only had one start. I mean, only one appearance in the mm-hmm. postseason. Yep. So six innings last year. You can't trust him. You cannot rely on him. As good as he looked last year, mm. he looked very good as a reliever in those few spots. Yeah. But you, yeah. you cannot trust him. All right, Yankee fans, 516-572-7440. This is a massive question I want a- answered. And I, I don't know where I come down on it because I go back and forth. My answer right now would be yes, I extend him. But how do you feel about a possible Aaron Judge extension? It's going to happen. The offer is going to come in the next few days. It might have already come, and you know they're work- looking at it, uh, Judge and his agents. But would you extend Aaron Judge? Yes or no? Well, I mean, I think if you're going based off of when he's on the baseball field, yes, I think you definitely extend him. Unfortunately, you definitely have to ha- come to a certain medium in terms of the injuries because the injuries are that's just a thing with Aaron Judge. It's I huge. Mean, it's it's a big thing. You can, and he's in his thirties. He's actually in his early thirties. It's actually crazy to say. Um, I that's that's why you have to come to a medium because the injuries. I I still think they're going to be there. They're just still going to be there. Yeah. If, I, go ahead, Elijah. I think a extension gets done, but the injuries is going to knock a lot of money that he could potentially make off. So maybe it's not a smart idea to sign with the Yankees. 
Uh, maybe he wants to test his value in free agency, but uh, if I'm the Yankees, I'm going to try to get a deal done. That's quickly. exactly what I was going to say. I, if I'm the Yankees, I really want to sign this guy long term. If I'm Aaron Judge, I don't think I sign this right now. I yeah. think I wait till I'm in free agency, see what other people want to offer me, see if there's a better situation out there. Because who knows what the Yankees going to look like this year? But it, he doesn't want to. I don't think he wants to leave the Yankees. I think he, he wants to be. Yeah, a definitely. For what? What if he doesn't sign before opening day and they stink up Yankee Stadium this year? I and still he think he wants to be a mm. Yankee. Wow. But at the end of the day, he has a price for the Yankees in his head, and he has a price for most likely any other team. And if the Yankees reach that price, he'll sign. Otherwise, it's going to be, when it comes to free agency, do you have the money and reach my asking price? Yeah. Everybody the has big, a price. The big elephant in the room is if he goes to free agency, your Where team is going to offer a contract. I don't want uh, yeah, you, well, he's Aaron, want, he's Aaron Judge. I, I'd rather save for Soto. I'd rather save for Soto. I don't want Aaron Judge. I want, I'm booking big picture. I want one Soto. Okay, anyway, I'm with you. Yeah, no, you're right, Elijah. And, I mean, <laughs> the Mets would be involved, sure. Yeah. I think they'd ask around. I don't think it'd be serious. But teams out west with yeah, the Dodgers, Dodgers, Dodgers the, kid. Uh, the, Giants. the Angels. I'm thinking the Padres. All right, yeah. again, uh, I'll, let's talk at once. But... Yes, those California teams are going to obviously be interested. Yes. How because many years does he? do we think he gets? Seven. Seven. Eight. Yeah, seven. I was, I was very surprised to learn that he's 29 years old. Yeah, yep. no, he came in. Was um, like, he was in the minors for a long time. He came in very late. I think he 2016 was his first year. He came up yeah. at 24, and his rookie year was 25. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, he's an older guy, and this has been a conversation. The same thing's going to happen to Pete Alonso. Yep. He's not going to get the same money that uh, Judge the Judge gets. You know, same thing. He's an older guy. So, I don't know. I, I would. I think you have to extend him, but hmm. there's risk, and there's risk in any extension. At any contract you give out, especially a long-term contract, there's, mm-hmm. there's a ton of risk. So you're going into this knowing... There's this might be a terrible contract, mm-hmm. yeah. but I don't think the Yankees have a choice. And if they have the cojones to not offer him a contract and let him walk, or not, you know, even have fair—not I shouldn't say fair negotiations, but not real negotiations here—and they do let him test the market, that would be something. Yeah, I, I think that's going to burn us if we if we let him test mm-hmm. the market. I just think some team is going to offer more than us. I think free the Yankees, agency. I think the Yankees get him back. I, I know. But I don't know. It just there, there's it's not a, it's not a stone cold. Yeah, you would think it's a, oh my god, it's a hundred percent yes. It's not. To it's do not it. Jeter. It's not a definitive no. yes or no. no. There's a risk to look. There's a risk to a player whether he says yes to the contract or no. We saw that with with uh, with the other side of town with uh, Conforto. He decided not to take the one hundred million. Oh yeah, he's he still looks, unsigned. And Thank he looks reminding me about he looks dumb. And you know my. My dad, I had to ask my dad, do you want Conforto back? No, done. <laughs> mm. Nope, I don't think that any Met fan should want him back. And by the way, I, you know, I should have pulled up the clip. Maybe we'll play it tomorrow. Do you remember uh, the GM meetings, winter meetings? Scott Boris had an interview. Mm. He did an interview. Yep. Yeah. And they asked, he, they were asked about Michael Conforto, and he called him the King of Queens. The ace. <laughs> oh, ah, Kevin Smith. The, the ace to all GM's hearts. That's what he said, and the interest was extraordinary. Well, Scott, it's March 28th. We're 10 days away from starting baseball, and your client doesn't have a job, and I'm guessing his contract isn't going to be good enough to uh, – I'm guessing his contract won't match what the Mets offered him as a qualifying offer. So, Michael, I don't care what happens to you. I, I was talking to a friend <laughs> last night, and he's a diehard Mets fan like myself, and he says, you know, <sighs> I'm getting a little bit emotional about Michael Conforto. And I'm saying, I don't know if I'll get there, but I am not there right now. Him and Scott <laughs> Boris can kiss my ass. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, you are listening to uh, 90.3 WHPC, WHPC Sports Talk, here on the voice of Nassau Community College. I said that all backwards. I don't care. It's okay. I am Michael Merlo. I'm joined by Joshua Mahi, Matt Leonard, Elijah Blaine, and Ross Levine. Uh, guys, very quickly, the NBA. Uh, by the way, hold on one second. Michael Merlo, Stone Cold Lock. Wait, with a sense wait a of minute. You're of the millennium. What? Okay, I'll lock them. All right, fine, fine. Uh-huh. Still for Wednesday, whatever. <laughs> no, I, we got Wednesday too. I'll, okay. I'll lock on Wednesday. It's his picks. It's my picks. Oh, fine. <laughs> Come on, man. We're going to get to them in a minute. 
the Bulls are going to come to Madison Square Garden tonight and annihilate the New York Knicks. Oh, yeah, man. annihilate the Knicks. That's a given. That. Don't say is, that because I'm going to tonight's game. I'm is, sorry, wait, Josh. Wait, you're going so tonight? Yeah. Is Jewish ah, playing? That's not I, what I want to hear. I don't know. If he's playing, we're going to get smoked. I, I think he... <laughs> yeah. I, think, I mean, that's what I read before. That he was, it was like trending sorry. towards playing. Three, minus it, three and a half. Lay the number. Do what you got to do. <laughs> the Bulls are going to kill the Knicks. Yeah, sorry, I agree. Josh. I'm sorry. I Things have been going out. too good. The Knicks have been with the Knicks won three straight on the road. Well, because Randall was sitting with that yeah. Julius. Yeah. So yeah, we won by two against the Pistons with Randall. Yeah, come on now. They're gonna come home. Oh man, that's right. They played in Detroit yesterday mm, afternoon. Yeah. Oh my God. This. Is, so I'm sorry, Josh. They, they're gonna <laughs> damn. <laughs> not even a, a, a competitive. Not game. even close. No. Uh, not even. Not oh. even close. Oh, I. Yeah. I just. Honestly, when they when they came back and beat the Heat, I just I think that was like my cross line of my uh, <laughs> don't ever play Randall ever again. I do I don't want I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him on the court. I just want him gone. I know they'll probably sell low and they'll and it'll be great in Dallas. But you know what? <laughs> That's I'm sorry. I want him gone. I don't care how much he's getting paid. He's he sets the team down. And honestly, the 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 locker room is so much better without him. Is Dallas for the bad Knicks school to die? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. exactly. and then he'll get yeah. traded again. That's uh, what's gonna happen. Actually, I was gonna say Tyson Chandler. That was the reverse. Yeah, situation, that's true. That's but true. Yeah. Do we um with the Knicks because there's really no point in Randall playing anymore yeah. this season. No but point. And we saw how well they played those two games uh, at Charlotte and <laughs> Charlotte, Charlotte and Miami without him. Hmm. So you bring him back. And the fact that they actually brought him back, you could have just gone the, the fake injury route and been like, oh, you know, Randall, he has a quad injury, you want to rest him for the rest of the season. It's the fact that they brought him back where I'm mm. like, I'm getting the sinking feeling, and we've talked about it on the show. It's like either Tibbs has to be gone or Randall has to be gone. But I'm getting the increasing, sinking, depressing feeling that they're both going to be back. And there's nothing we can do about it. That that's yeah. how I'm feeling right now. Well, I don't think you know, I think with the way they've played without him. I mean, doesn't management see this? Yeah, they have I, to. They don't I, care. And by the way, I, this is this is a complete. This could go on for a while. This topic yes. I wanted to bring up. Yeah. I don't know if you guys read or even brought up last week about this athletic article going around that apparently there was somebody in the front office. I'm for blanking on the name. Not World Wide West, but close to Leon Rose. That was very very. Um, he was really. He, Against going for it and wanted to rebuild, Brock and Allers. obviously, what Brock Allers is his name? Yes, yeah. And Tibbs obviously does not want to rebuild, and no huh. team no. Tibbs is on is going to rebuild. And Leon Rose was kind of like stuck in the mud with, with making this decision, and you could see that the roster is stuck in the mud. Mm. It's a complete stuck in the mud roster where you just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I I think I I'm starting to get the belief that I think he. Tom will be back, so I think, and someone unfortunately. And look, I think the way they look at it, because I actually remember I I heard Ian Begley talk about this. Um, he actually talked to somebody um, that's very close to the Knicks organization, and he's like, "Do you do they really want to do this again? Where it's just another circle of a head coach? I mean, this is their fifth. They would be on their fifteenth head coach wow. since since two thousand. 2015. That's I mean, that's 22 yeah. years. I mean, that's ridiculous. But I we mean, had Isaiah Thomas as GM, so that doesn't th- really count. He was a coach for one year. Yeah. Terrible. Um, Mike Woodson was their best that we've had. Mm. Since 2000, yeah, probably. So, I still think we should have Mike Woodson as coach, but. He's coaching Indiana now. Yeah. yeah. He's fine with it. Yeah. That's Here's here's my just crazy, weird Knicks prediction. Is It's about the Knicks personnel right now. I think if Thibodeau goes anywhere. Alec Burks is going to follow him. He's going to be part of the Tibbs club now. Like yeah. Derrick Rose is going to go. <laughs> Alec Burks will play point guard. Yeah. It'll be great. Who Jimmy else? Butler is a part of yes. the Tibbs club. Who else is going to yeah, let Taj Alec, Gibson? Taj Gibson. <laughs> Who else is going to let Alec Burks play point guard? Exactly. He's the only coach, maybe in NBA Alec history. Burks is part of the Tibbs club now. Wherever Tibbs goes, he's going to follow him. When Derrick Rose retires, <laughs> it'll be Alec Burks. Tibbs sees Alec Burks and through his eyesight, it's like Penny Hardaway. Mm. Like, what? <laughs> It's crazy. I mean, oh, man. I, see what happens. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm I, yeah. I, I know that. I just know that the next head coach they're going to hire, because I think it's going to be Johnny Bryan on the coaching staff. That's what, That's my wish. I just know he's going to get fired in two years. I I, I, I want um, Atkinson. I think it'll be good, too. Atkinson will be the guy. If you're going into a rebuild, that that's who you want. Yeah. But then you're going to be on your 16th coach. Again, because you know he's going to get fired in two years if they start to try to win. Well, if the, that's the thing, because... Actually, I don't know because I think you were just looking at a 
weird scenario where Durant got there and they were like, oh, you know, we don't want Durant. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. we, we, I mean, we don't want Atkinson. I, this guy, I, you got to give him a chance. No, he's a good coach. He's a good I, coach. He can develop it's, players. It's, it's not Kenny. It's not Atkinson. It's not any of these coaches. It's the brass of the Knicks. It's, it's not, these guys are not going to give these coaches a chance. That, that's, that's my concern with any of these head coaches. But Thibodeau is such a weird scenario. Because obviously this team should go into rebuild, and he's not a guy that is going to be here for the rebuild. Maybe it was just the wrong hire. But he signed a five-year deal. Well, I thought that's disgusting. (laughs) (laughs) If he is willing to (laughs) go into this rebuild and completely change his philosophy... Then fine, mm-hmm. but it, you're just gonna Ross, you're just pushing it. You're just I, pushing I this down the road. You're gonna have to do it eventually. Are, are they paying David Fizdale right now? Probably. Yeah. Are they, he are, who should not be, be named. Tom Thibodeau. They're gonna be paying three head coaches: the guy they hire, Tom that, Thibodeau, and David Fizdale. Well, that then, sounds. <laughs> we don't even say the name David Fizdale in my house. That's how bad <laughs> it is. We refuse to say. His well, name. That, that's. Oh. But isn't that my point though? You just are you just you're pushing all this down the road with also blaming the head coach for it. Mm-hmm. If you're just gonna keep doing it. Can I have a quick final thought, Mike? Sure. So I saw this post on Barstool Sports Instagram. It says, who is the best fat athlete of all time? And, and they gave some good names. Let's hear it. First of all, nobody said Babe Ruth, which bothered me. All right. And some of the names they came up with were <laughs> Zion Williamson. <laughs> Vince Wilfork was a popular answer. Love He's up there, David yeah. Ortiz, CC Sabathia, and the one I love the most, Bartolo Colon. <laughs> the baseball players mm-hmm. are something. Mm. But yeah. Will Fork was an yeah. insane athlete for his size. Yeah. And that guy could run. I mean, he was fat. He I was, mean, he was like 400 <laughs> pounds. No, no, no. Like, that guy was fat. And I'm I'm a fat guy. I could say it. His stomach the overall was, was just like, huge. It yeah. still is huge. Mm. Yeah. Like, at least Poppy and even Bartolo and what was the other baseball player you named? Babe Ruth. Babe, Babe Ruth. Ruth. Uh, Prince I'll, Fielder. Prince Fielder. Like, yeah. those guys weren't as fat. Fat as <laughs> as Will Fork. Will Fork is easily four hundred pounds, right? Yeah, huh. that, that yeah. that's a, that's I, a nice list. That's what, a fun what list. Uh, yeah, how about uh-huh. Jared Lorenzen? Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I always he didn't have Michael, success no, in Michael, NFL, Michael, but Michael Lorenzen. No, no, Jared, no, pitcher, Jared Lorenzen. Michael's a pitcher for the Reds. Yeah. Yeah. Remember yeah. Big Pop when he just like threw the bat, broke his bat on the uh, the phone one time. Yeah. Oh, that in was, Baltimore, oh. that was fantastic. Yeah, smashing the phone. You brought up Zion Williamson. Hey, Zion, if you're listening. We hit know the, you are. Hit the treadmill. Get now Weight Watchers. <laughs> get off the fat people list. <laughs> we'll see you in MSG in 2024, baby. Yep. Uh, that's, that's, <laughs> a, that's a weird dream. All right. <laughs> that's going to do it for WHPC Sports Talk. Thank you for listening. For Joshua Mahi, Matt Leonard, Elijah Blaine, and Ross Levine, I am Michael Merlo here on the voice of Nassau Community College. 90.3 WHPC. Have a fantastic day, everybody.